Dear students, welcome. In today's session, we look at the bookkeeping of personal expenses. Here you see a little bit old-fashioned picture. I don't really know what this means in English, but in German this is Zwieback. If you have never eaten Zwieback, you might only want to do this once in your lifetime, but you should definitely try it if you have a chance to buy Zwieback in a German supermarket. But let's look at personal expenses. That basically covers all employees in companies. And what we will refer to is a little bit the German system of social security. Some of you might be familiar with it, some will not be familiar, so I will explain a little bit. So if I look at the payment, the remuneration or compensation uh, of employees, it varies between two perspectives. First, there's the perspective of the employee. The employee might just look at what do I get when I work on, for example, for an entire month. In Germany, most uh, jobs are paid on a monthly basis. So you get basically your money at the end of the month. So the employee obtains a gross play and the employer withholds income and church tax. So in Germany, a lot of people are members of the Catholic or Protestantic Church, can also of course be other churches, and 9% of the tax load, roughly 9% of the tax load, go to the churches. Of course you can opt for leaving the churches and then you would have not to pay this. And then there's the employee's contribution to the pension scheme, health insurance, nursing insurance, unemployment insurance. So this is kind of, if you don't uh, exceed a given salary per month, this is kind of what you have to pay, even if you are not benefiting from this. But there are also advantages of this system, because usually you can assume that every German or employee in Germany is covered by health insurance, so if you have a serious illness, you don't really have to think about the cost because they are fully covered by the health insurance. That is different in a variety of countries. It's even different in well-developed countries like the US where there are kind of individual negotiations between insurance companies and uh, medical institutions and so on. So this is kind of a good achievement at least from my perspective. But then we also have the perspective of the employer and the employee causes all personal expenditures, cash and non-cash, and the gross pay is not what the employer really pays because the employer basically pays also uh, the employer's contribution to the pension scheme, health insurance, nursing insurance, unemployment insurance, and on top, accident insurance. Usually you can say roughly that the employee pays half of the social insurance uh, contributions and the employer pays half and the accident insurance is paid is fully paid by the employer. So the employer pays all positions to the concerned institutions. So the employee does not have to take care, for example, of a payment to her or his health insurance. So let's look at what this means. So if the gross pay is 2,817 euros, and this is basically typical numbers you find here. Of course, they can vary a little bit because health insurance percentages and all this can be different over the years and also between different health insurance companies and others too. So the numbers change slightly, but it's a realistic example. So the income tax a person pays then is 400 96 euro 83 then because Germany as you all know was reunified in 1990 3rd of October and because at that time the former eastern federal states the so-called new federal states needed a better infrastructure so there was a solidarity surcharge introduced out of whatever reason you know how politicians are still exists and this is 27.32 euros. The church tax, as I said, basically 9% of the income tax, it's 44.71. This adds up to 
taxes of 568.86 euro. Here you actually see commas because if you work in Germany, this will be documented as a comma, but of course in English as a point. Then the payment to the social insurance agencies. Here we have the health insurance. This is the employee's contribution 22307. The nursing insurance, the employee's contribution 24 euros. The pension scheme 280.95 euros. And the unemployment insurance 59.3. So overall, this adds up to 587.32 euros. So the net pay basically the employee receives is 1,660.82, considerably less than the gross pay of 2,817. Um, and at the same time, then I might contribute to uh, form some capital. There are different options for this. Um, this is here 33 euros and this is also um, subtracted from the amount uh, from the net pay. So this results in the amount paid to the employee of 1627.82. So this is the employee's perspective. So it basically goes from 2817 to 1627. Now we look at the employer's perspective. Currently, the employees pay 0.9% of the gross pay more than the employees. So I said it's roughly 50-50, but the employees pay a little bit more. So that leads to 587.32. This is the employee's contribution minus 0 0.009 times 2,800. 17 and this equals 5561.97 as the employer's contribution to the social insurance. So if we look now at this uh, numbers, so we already know the gross pay is 2817 plus a payment of the uh, employer to the social insurance agency is 561.97 plus social benefits according to collective wage agreements that can be negotiated by the unions. Here we assume it is zero or other voluntary social benefits. We also assume it to be zero here, plus contributions to the Accident Prevention and Insurance Association. The accident insurance is 20 euro. So what the employer really pays is 3,398.97 euros. And of course, we see this is roughly 3,400. The employee gets a little bit more than 1,600. There is a huge gap between what the employees really gets paid and what the employers pays overall, 3,400 in this case. Now we look at the accounting treatment of these personal expenditures and they depend on the chosen assignment principle, which is also relevant for other types of expenditures. And here we talk about the marginal and the final principles, which we have already talked about. So there are basically two cases. Personal expenditures are directly related to the production of products. Then they are income relevance when these products are sold. So technically, or accounting-wise, they become a part of the value of the products because these personal expenditures occur directly because I produce a given product. And the expense happens then in the period when this product is sold because it basically is part of the finished products. And if I sell the finished product um, next period, then it will be basically in the closing balance of this finished product and will wander into the balance sheet and will stay there. So this is according to the matching principle. Second case, the second case is these expenditures are expenditures which are not directly related to the production of products. 
then they usually become immediately income relevant. I book them as expenses in the period when they occur. When I work in November and I'm paid whatever is 3,400 from the employer's perspective, they become expenses in November. Treatment as expenses in the period the corresponding expenditures occur. This is a period-based view or according to the period concept, which is part or let's say very much related or specific case very often of the matching concept. Let's now look at the book records. So the book records, uh, and here we actually start with the employer's perspective, the 3,398.97. This is the case where we have uh, income neutral production of products, payment later, expense when sales occur. So this is where basically the labor costs of the personal expenditures are directly related to the production of a product. So we have 3,398.97. This is attributable labor to production. The book record is then products. It wanders into the product, 3,000. 398 and then I have the different accounts payable. So I have to pay, and of course I want to pay, 1627.89 to the employee, which is a net pay. Then I have to pay the taxes, 568.86 to the financial authority or the treasury. Then I have to pay the accounts payable of the social insurance agencies. So this is, in this case, 1,149.29, so it includes the employer share and the employee share. Then I have uh, the accident insurance, 20 euro, and the accounts payable to the financial institution where the employee wants to form his or her capital, 33 euros. So these are the related book records. And this is basically then part of the value of the product. So here we see the book record. If I now have income relevant sales of half of all produced products on September 15th for 2,500 euros, the payment is later, so it's basically sold uh, on credit or it becomes receivable from the perspective of the seller. Then I have sales expenses of 1,699.49, which is 3,398 divided by two. And I book this two finished products. And again, look at the book record. It's kind of simplified because now we assume that only labor uh, is part of the finished products. But here we see how the half of the money which became part of the value of the products is now leaving the company. It becomes an expense and the value of the finished products reduces. And then we have, of course, the receivables because we sell the product on credit to our customer. Receivables, 2,400. Two sales revenue, 2,500 euros. So these are the book records which we have to book when the production of a product and the personal expenditures are directly related with each other. The alternative to is the income relevant event when the expenditures occur in the indirect case where the personal expenditures are not related or only indirectly related when I book according to the marginal principle. Again, here I directly book the expense. So this is 3,398.97 and then I have the same book uh, records or the same accounts concerned on the credit side, accounts payable, the payment to the employee, the wage, the treasury, the financial authorities, 568.86, the accounts payable to the social insurance agencies, the accounts payable to the accident insurance and the accounts payable to the financial institution. So this right side is the same, but what is differing is the left side of the book record because it immediately becomes an expense. And when we now sell the product, of course, assuming that uh, we don't have any 
other consumption of raw materials and so on, then we book receivables to sales revenues 2,500. So this is our example here. And if we look now a little bit further from the personal expenditures which companies have and the development over the years in Germany and in other countries, Germany is actually the lower curve, uh, then you see that Germany had a development of labor cost which was far slower than in many other countries, which can also cause problems in terms of unemployment. Actually, during the period we are considering here between 2000 and 2015, unemployment went down considerably, but Germans paid for this. They paid with the modest increases in their wages. Only in the last years where the German economy is actually very successful, the wages go up more. And some other countries like Ireland, and Portugal, they actually have negative developments or Greece negative developments of their wages. Um, but still, uh, like Greece is still better off compared to 2000. They had an increase by 20%, whereas Germans had an increase of less than 20% if we compare 2000 and 2015. So if you want to say some countries which went through the financial crisis, they paid their price later. And I'm not the one who should decide what is better or worse. Thank you for watching the video.